Hello and welcome to another Madman Mike Productions how-to video. In the last one, I showed you how to make a water bomb from a piece of paper, origami style. And in this one, I'm going to show you how to make a clock from a circular saw blade. Now this list of materials I'm going to give you next, you don't necessarily need all of them. This is just to do it in the method that I did it. And there's, there's quite a lot involved, but you can skip or choose what to, what to take away, okay? So here's the list that I used. One, you need a circular saw blade. Two, you need the fonts you want to use for the clock face. You'll need some paper, some masking tape, exacto knife, a compass, needle files, ruler, battery, kitchen roll, tractor, pen, wire, salt, some sandpaper, Q-tips, nail varnish remover, Nail varnish itself, maybe a bit of wood and or an old magazine to cut on. And last but not least, if you're not recycling an old clock, you're going to need your actual clock pieces. So here we go, I'll show you how to get started. Okay, so the first thing you want, of course, is the circular saw blade. Um, it's up to you where you get this from. You might have one in your own workshop. You might need to get one from your parents, your neighbours, or possibly even a small um, carpentry shop nearby might have a small one you could use. If they have a bigger one, that's fine, but it's up to you how you want to handle that because you'll have to get different components for it. What you need to do is clean it up with a bit of the sandpaper that I mentioned earlier, using the rougher grits, working your way up to a finer grit. Now, this was done by hand, and it's giving it given it a nice brushed steel effect, a little bit rough but that kind of goes with it. I've left the back side rough to show you what it looked like originally and as you can see I've cleaned it up quite well just by hand to give you that effect. So that's done using the sandpapers which you can get from older body repair shops, DIY shops, pretty much anywhere. As you can see this uh, one was from Halfords. By the way I also use this stuff for sharpening my uh, tools and knives, it's, it's quite good stuff. So get the sandpaper, clean up the blade. Next thing you need to do, might already come blunt, but you will need to use the needle files and actually clean up the individual teeth so they are no longer sharp all the way, or not only on the edges, but the actual inside of the cutting lines here. I can actually spin this and my hand does not get cut, okay? So, at the end of the day, if you want to sell something, you want to make sure that the people aren't going to sue you because they've, because they've cut their fingers off or something. So, cleaned up the blade, what you then do is you choose the font you want for the numbers. Now I just got this font online, I've printed it out, I've done it in several different sizes and I've decided that I want to go with this middle font size here and as you can see what I'm going to have is the numbers going all the way around uh, and that'll be my guideline for the etching later on which will be done with the acid or vinegar in our case. So, got your saw blade sorted. Now what we've got to do is cut these numbers out very, very carefully so that we end up with a stencil. And for that, you're going to need your hobbyist knives. If you're wondering where you can get different fonts of these different types, you just go to Google. Uh, one of the font sites I used is Da Fonts, and they will actually tell you what you can use the fonts for, be it for personal use, business use, or whatever. And they've got quite a wide range and they do it by genre. So this was under, I think, the, the gothic uh, look. Okay, and now using the exact knife, what I've been able to do, if I get this right, is cut the one out. Later on, what we're gonna be doing is putting that over the steel using a, a soft pencil to mark it onto the steel so that we know where we're going to be etching. So I'm just going to carry on with the rest of them. One thing I should have said, get a bit of wood, or failing that, just an old magazine, to actually rest the paper on as you cut. Reason being, if you do it directly on the granite like I've just done, stupidly I wasn't thinking properly, if you do it directly onto granite or a bit of metal, you will actually blunt the knife, which means you'll spend half your time either replacing the blades or sharpening them burying them or whatever. So if you get the wood, save you a bit of hassle. Let's carry on. Right, 
I've already blunted this one at the tip and that's actually what I'm using to cut so I'll have to either replace the blade or just use the other knife that comes in there so that's what I'm going to do for the moment and carry on so bear that in mind use a bit of wood or um, or an old magazine okay okay so there we can see that on the four I've cut out couple of strips but left a little black bit there that's to literally just hold the central piece in place and I'm going to do the same on the other sides as well I'm sorry I'm not getting that too well with the light okay I'll just do a bit more and it might become a bit clearer then okay that's now a bit clearer should be able to see the center of the four is held in place by these three small pieces what happens is as we're going around with the pencil and scoring this in, when we take it away, we can just join up the lines with just a straight pencil edge. It's that simple. So as you can see, I've now got four down. Only about another 11 to go. Okay, and there we go. It's taking me a while, but there we have all 12 numbers and number sets, I should say, ready for the clock face. Now all I've got to do is get him onto this. So we've got our stencil and we've got our saw blade, but now we want to be able to get the characters onto the saw blade in the right place. Now, first thing to start with this is you're going to need a piece of paper. Now, this blade that I'm using, as you can see, just about fits nicely onto the paper. If you're using a bigger blade, you're going to need a bigger piece. Okay, now what you do is you start off by folding the piece of paper in half and you do this twice once lengthways and once widthways. So open this up using your ruler and pen, you just mark up the lines, make sure they're nice and clear. You then take your protractor, stick it in the middle. It doesn't matter if you've only got one of the half semicircle ones, you just turn it around and end up doing this bit twice. And what you do is you mark off at every 30 degrees. Okay, now that you've got these all plotted out, you then just simply make the line across all of it. Make sure it goes to the edge of the paper. So you can see it when the saw blade is sat on it. Okay, you'll now see that we can now see these lines when we place our saw blade on the dead center. We can see them coming out. This shows us where all of the numbers are to be. So then what we want to do is we want to mark on the blade how far in we want them to be and this involves the compass. Okay, now I've got my pen in the compass. Um, word of warning, if you're using a Bic or a Biro, just be careful you don't completely crush the pen when you tighten it up. It's very easy to do. Then what you do is you get the distance just right. Bearing in mind that the numbers as they go around might end up at the top hitting or going over the top of the blade. So you want to make sure that this line is a good central point. Okay, so at the end of the day, you can always use a bit of alcohol or even the nail varnish remover just to remove the pen that you've already put down. So you can always go back and redo it. So here goes. Okay, now this isn't coming up perfectly because of course you're basically using a biro pen on a bit of metal. But hopefully you can just about see this. I ended up having two lines because I jogged it, but that's not a problem. It's the complete one that I want. So now what happens is, as you start putting the numbers around, with a bit of good light, you can see the central point. But we still need to know exactly whereabouts they go. So, take your pen from your compass, lay the ruler over these lines again, and mark it on the blade. And as you can see, what you'll have is you'll have a point where the center of each number should go. Let me just finish this off. Okay, and then we have a saw blade with 12 points mapped out. 
Now if you feel that this is too close near the center or near the edge, it's not a problem, you just do another circle with the compass. You just place it down and make sure that that point is as close to the center as possible and that all the lines you've drawn match up. And you just do another circle, it's that simple. Then once you've done that and you're happy with all these points where they are, then what you've got to do is transfer the numbers to the steel. Best way to do that is to just use your pen. You can use a pencil if you'd rather, but if you're using a nice bright color like green or well, actually, to be fair, the red's pretty good. And if you just carefully trace through the insides of the numbers, it'll come through on the steel. So I'm just gonna do that for you now. Little tip, as you're doing this, try and get the gaps between the top piece of paper and the bottom piece of paper as close as possible. That'll mean that the uh, numbers are just right. And of course, as you're coming down around here, you then can make sure that the distance between the top and the lines is about the same. That'll again make sure that it's just about right. At the end of the day, no one's really gonna notice if you're out by you know, several degrees or whatever, but get it as close as possible and it makes it all look much nicer. All right, now we've already cut out our stencil, transferred that with the biro to the other side of this saw blade, but before we go any further, we need to test the nail varnishes. This one, which I used, which is, uh, what is this? Wear Max by Rimmel. It was rubbish, it's actually tarnished the blade originally, and I've just had to go ahead and buff it all out again. This one I'm gonna try, but I'll let you know which ones um, I find to be the best. What you really want though is a nice dark colour, something like black or really dark purple or blue, so that you can actually see the contrast between the steel um, and therefore also where you've drawn and uh, where you've got the nail varnish so far. So, come back to you about that in a minute. Of course what you want to do is once you've, when you come to actually testing out a nail varnish, is just put it somewhere inconspicuous or on the black, so on the black, on the back of the blade and leave it there to dry because then one when that's dried, we're then gonna remove it with the nail varnish remover and just see if it's tarnished the blade. Like I say, the Rimmel one did that, so don't use the Rimmel one. So we're just gonna see how this one came out. This one is, I've got no idea, it's a generic brand, creative nail design, so we'll see how that comes out. This bit is gonna seem a little bit out of sync, and for that I apologize. Basically, as you can see, we've got one basic test that we're not gonna be using electrolysis on, and we've got another test that we are going to be using the acid and electrolysis on. Reason for this is I want to see if any of the acid actually gets underneath um, in case there's like an air bubble or just where it hasn't attached properly to the steel. So I'm going to go through this a little bit in more detail later on, but here's the vinegar. Put it on there. We've got the battery with the wires. And basically what we do, just hold the wires to the metal. Okay. I didn't do it for particularly long, but you can probably just make out that it has etched it just a little bit here. It says test. Actually, it helps if it's the right way up. It says test, and it hasn't tarnished it at all. So that one I'm gonna carry on with, and I'm gonna do all of the back in that nail varnish. Okay, so now this is the saw blade with all the numbers drawn on it. As you can see, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, all the way around. It's a little bit rough, but that's not a problem, because what we can always do is as we're applying the nail varnish around these shapes, because this uh, pen, sorry, this, this penned on bit is what we basically want to be etching. As we're going around with the nail varnish, we can double check it against the image that we had originally. So I can have a look at this and see, oh yeah, yeah, the one should actually be a little bit more spiky here or there. And I can do that when I'm putting on the nail varnish. Okay, so what we're now gonna do if I just turn around so I can see what I'm doing a bit better. Is using the nail varnish, we are simply going to go around the shapes that we've made. Just right up to the edges. And what this is, is that when this dries, when we apply the salt and vinegar solution, which is going to etch into it, it won't etch through the nail varnish. So whatever's left bare will end up being burned through leaving us with the numbers. One other quick thing I'm gonna say as well, is that if you wanna make it a little bit more clear as to where the actual angles are for the, um, for the actual clock face, what you can do is just put down two, or just one more circle, and then 
where the lines intersect, you just leave just like a, for example, you can make it like a little arrowhead or you can make a dot or anything so that as the uh, hands are going around, when it reaches the dot, you know that that's exactly where the arrow should be. Okay, so now that's the numbers done. And while I'm letting that dry, before I try and scrape away for the detail, I'm now just gonna put in just some little markers just to make it a bit clearer where the uh, hour, hours are. Now all I've gotta do is wait for it to dry. Okay, it's a new day. I had to stop last night because I was getting a migraine. So as you can see, it's all dried up, but it's not particularly um, defined around these edges where it's supposed to be all nice and spiky. So you get your needle out. It can either be a pin, a needle, or this if you're actually using a X-Acto knife set. And what you do is you just simply scratch away at it. So here it goes. Also gonna quickly say that uh, I made these a little bit larger last night so that any of the acid doesn't go on and etch what I don't want to be etched. I'm just gonna scratch away just a little line just to help show where the hours are. So here it goes. Next thing to do is to actually start etching all this. For this, you're gonna need the following. The bowl to mix the solution in. In there, you will put some vinegar. Then add the salt. Some people suggest two parts vinegar to one part salt, but you know, you can mess around with it, see what you, see what you prefer to use. Stir up. Cut your wire. Trim the edges of the plastic off. Okay, so we're about ready now to try the etching. What I'm gonna be doing first is just this inner ring with the lines. Um, but before we do that, I'm just gonna quickly show you how to set up your actual etching equipment. Okay, now I quickly showed you this earlier on, but what you do is you get your nine volt battery, make some loops with the wire, and stick them around the terminals. Now this one, this the larger one of the terminals, which I think is the negative, yeah it is. That one's easy to do because it kind of uh, splays out but still get a bit of a uh, masking tape and put it over it, that's just to hold it in place. The next one's a bit trickier. Admittedly, it's a lot easier if you get one of these um, tags that literally just clips on and then has two wires coming off because then you can just solder some bits to the end, but I haven't got one of those. You can get them from your local Radio Shack or Maplins or whatever. But you take this one, coil it around several times around this terminal, try and get it as tight as possible. And once you've got it wound around as tight as possible on this terminal, you then just take this one down as well. Make sure you get the tape as tight as possible. It is gonna be moving around a little bit, but the tighter you've got it, the better. Like I say, it is easier if you've got one of the poppers that you can then just solder bits to the end of. Battery, just move out of the way for the moment, but take one of the wires and tape that to the blade where it's clear, where there's no actual varnish. This will make one end of the circuit, okay? So I'm just gonna pop that there for the moment. We can move it around later on, it's not a problem. But then, you take your vinegar solution. Some people, I think I've already said this, um, recommend two parts vinegar to one part salt, or you can just add salt until you're happy with it. But basically what you do is you just take your Q-tip, dip it in the vinegar, put it where you wanna etch, and then add the white. You may even hear it sizzling, especially if you're using um, some kind of transformer. Sorry, if you can hear that scrabbling in the background, that's my rabbit, he's going a bit mental. And basically, you want to hold that there for around about a minute per line. So, I'm just going to quickly do all this for you guys. Okay, so 
Okay, so that's the first part done. We're just doing the lines. Before I do the numbers, I want to clear this up and just see how it turns out. So, get your nail varnish remover. Get some paper towel or a cotton bud or whatever. Uh, not a cotton bud, you know, like a cotton wool pad. That's what you really want. And start wiping. Okay, we've now cleaned up the varnish from the uh, middle lines. Don't worry about the Sharpie, that's just to try and help it look a bit uh, more colourful when we clean it up, because sometimes the contrast isn't uh, quite sharp enough. But I'm just going to quickly say, if you're not too sure if these numbers have come out quite well, what you can do is just bring your stencil over it, Hang on. there we go, and just have a look and see if it's uh, right. You can then also mark off if you feel that anything just needs to be adjusted. Just thought I'd mention that quick tip before I move on to actually etching all these bits. I'm going to quickly say also, when it comes to the numbers, I'd recommend doing each number, and that's two then for these double characters. We're doing them in do them in two stages of 45 seconds each. The reason for that is then after 45 seconds you can clear off any residue or muck that's actually stopping the acid getting to the metal. Um, and then hopefully that total of, of um, a minute and a half will actually have a really nice etch. So uh, here goes. I'll show you afterwards. Okay, so that's all of them done. Now comes the moment of truth where we're gonna go just clean it all off. Okay, and there we go. It's actually come out quite well. You may notice some discoloration around the 12 and the like. Um, that would be just where I think some of the acid kind of got underneath the uh, nail varnish. So my advice to you would be make sure it's a good nail varnish and make sure you put it on quite nice and thick so it doesn't seep through. If it does come through like this, though, that's not a problem. All you've got to do is just get some um, really, really high grip um, sandpaper, something like some 2500 or some polishing cloths, and then that will just rub out quite nice and neatly. So what I'll do is I'll just polish this up and then I'll show you the little Sharpie trick. Okay, so I've just used um, some very fine sandpaper and just buffed away some of the in, uh, imperfections and the discoloration. But some of it hasn't come out too brightly. As you can see, the gate's a little bit faint. So what you can do, just take your Sharpie, and you just colour in... Well, I say colour in, you know what I mean. What you've got, and then before it's dry, you just dab it away with a bit of cleaning solution. Oh, well, that's dried up on that one. You don't want to take away too much, but you can just build up a layer then of ink that then just sits in the etching and just makes it a little bit more prominent. A um, few things I'll say at this point though, it definitely seems to be, um, discoloration will happen not only if you're using a cheap NAF nail varnish, but also if you don't put it on thick enough. So make sure you have a nice thick coat. Also, if you the longer you do it, the clearer it will be and if you're using a stronger power source. So although a 9 volt battery does the job and it does it quite nicely, if you want to make it really clear and really deep with the etching so it goes into the metal deeper, you can use something like a Scalectrix transformer. I've used that in the past on one of my knife projects and that came out really well. So that's what I'm going to recommend for you guys. Okay, uh, so yeah, I'll just put it all together and show you it finally. Okay, and there you have it. You have the clock. Uh, I was thinking about selling this but as it's my first one and there are a few rough edges, I'm going to keep it and just put it in my, up in my workshop. Um, but there you go, I hope that was informative for you guys. Like I say, you can actually use this method for things like knives, um, just metal boxes and whatnot. Definitely, if you're using a 9-volt battery, do it for longer. Um, but if you've got something like a battery charger or a Scale Electrics uh, transformer, use that because that should be a little bit quicker on it then. But you still want to do it for a bit of time. But as you can see now, that's worked out quite well, and I'm pretty happy with that. So there you go. That was Madman Mike, and I hope this was a, a very good video for you. If not, I'm really sorry. Okay, just wanted to finish off by saying this. Of course, 
This is the clock we've just done using a PP3 battery to etch, and it looks pretty good. But, I mentioned about a knife project I did a while back. This is one uh, that my brother brought back from Tunisia. It was cheap tin and plastic handle and scabbard, so I've removed all that. But the etching, I don't know if you can see that, that was done with a Scalectrix transformer, which kicks out a bit more juice, and it actually is a lot deeper, which gives it a nice 3D embossed effect. Um, if that's what you're after, use something like a Scalectrix uh, transformer or a battery charger. If you just want um, a light etching, then by all means go ahead and carry on with the PP3 battery. I haven't done any experiments, but you could probably achieve this deeper effect if you just did it for a lot longer. I didn't have to hold it down that long when I was using the transformer, but experiment, you know, find a bit of scrap steel and just experiment, find out which method you like more. Okay, leave your comments at the bottom, I'll be interested to hear what you have to say about this, and I'll see you all soon.